Uh, it's 7 o'clock. We'll uh, call the October 6th council meeting to order. Uh, at this time, we'll have a moment of silence. We stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the roll, please. Mr. Crouch. Here. Mr. Watoski? Here. Mr. Payton? Here. Mr. McCrillis? Here. Mrs. Jones? Here. Any additions or corrections to the agenda? Any members of council? No. Okay. Nope. Okay, moving on. At this time, we will have a presentation uh, from Marilyn Black, who's here to talk to us about our uh, upcoming project on the renovation of City Hall. Welcome, Marilyn. Thank you. Good it's always good to see you. Thank you. And I hope to get acquainted with some of the folks on council that I have not previously met. Um, Thank let you. me introduce myself by saying uh, the name is Marilyn Black. I'm retired now um, after more than 25 years with the Oil Region Alliance, where I served as the Vice President for Heritage Development and was their prime grants writer. In retirement, I happen to be the co-owner of Black Wolf Communications LLC, and it is in that context uh, that I'm presenting a proposal from that firm to you for your consideration. It is related to a very important project that Council has uh, expressed significant interest in, and that is working on the exterior rehabilitation of the City Hall building. And I know that you already have secured preliminarily your architectural services and the copy of the preliminary cost estimate has been provided to you. Um, earlier this year, um, the grant officers for the State Historical Museum Commission and representatives of the city and I did meet to discuss that project and they toured the building as part of their um, initial input. What my firm is offering to you is grant writing services to help put together funding packages so that the net expenditure of your municipal funds is not the entire amount of that project. Uh, two primary sources have been identified and those are some of the grantors that we have met with preliminarily for you. And that is the State Historical Museum Commission, specifically their Keystone Historic Preservation Construction category. And also the Harold Heist Charitable Trust, which is a small charitable trust managed by PNC. And it is only for certain preservation of certain historic buildings located in Crawford County. If those are the two grant applications that are sought, uh, the proposal which has been shared with you in advance describes the hourly rates that Black Wolf would charge, and that is $50 per hour for professional services when it's work that I don't have to do on a specific day in a specific place for you. Um, if our contract was underway and there was a uh, specific meeting with um, other project partners or council members which you would need to attend, I would need to attend, or which my husband as the other member of the firm would need to attend, that would be $70 an hour. But the vast majority of the work would be at the $50 rate. We're suggesting that because the deadlines for those two grants happen to be March 1st, in the case of the PHMC grant application, and May 1st, in the case of the Harold Heist Fund, we're suggesting a contract period of November 1st through the end of April, so a six-month time period. 
We're further suggesting that the compensation be capped at a total of $2,000. If an additional grant entity is identified along the way that you feel would be appropriate and after preliminary research we can scope that out, it could be as a, an additional of up to $800 for each additional other grant application. Um, as I'm sure you realize in the field, many of the documents which are involved in doing the first one, you tend to be able to utilize in the others, especially because the first one is PHMC, and they are one of the more stringent ones, both in terms of their criteria and also the documentation that they require. My husband's particular role will be that of exterior photography. Um, fresh pictures will need to be taken, and we would suggest that that occur not in the midst of winter, um, when we can't show all of the features, but that would be the November period, which is why the month of November we're suggesting is the start. In the case of PHMC, in my previous job, I wrote four successful grant applications to that same category and managed those, and to the five to the Herald Heist, and have managed those successfully. So um, the grantors are familiar not only with me, but more importantly, I'm familiar with their procedures, their preferences, and their review processes. The resumes for both my husband, Darrell, and myself were also attached as part of the proposal. And since you had that in advance, I'm going to pause here and see what questions there may be. I'm good. Me too. Oh, okay, I don't have any questions. No, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Mayor, I have I have no questions. Uh, I know uh, of the work that you've done in our community, and uh, I'm happy that you were willing to come in and mm -hmm. uh, present to us. Okay. Um, council will uh, discuss this at a later date, and uh, I believe we could have it on our agenda next meeting. Very good. Okay. And if uh, additional questions come to mind, I will be here for the balance of the meeting, and if there's any clarifications that people have, just let me know. Okay. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Meeting minutes of September the 15th. Any additions or corrections to those uh, minutes? If not, uh, do I hear a motion to accept those and place them on file? So moved. Your second. I'll second. Roll, please. Mr. Hayden. Yes. Mr. McCrellis. Uh, yes. Mr. Crouch. Yes. Mr. Watoski. Yes. Mrs. Jones. Yes. Manager's report, Neil. Yep. Good evening, Council. Uh, a couple items here on the manager's report this week. Uh, the first being, uh, just to let Council know, our public works has hired a new employee for the vacancy left by Skip Welling, who went to the Code Enforcement Building Inspector position uh, most recently. Uh, this new employee is Ryan Martin, who already has a uh, commercial Class A CDL uh, with many years of experience and as a concrete finisher, which will be a great asset uh, to our public works. Um, and Ryan started on October 5th, which was uh, just yesterday. Second item I have is uh, the diamond maps. At the previous meeting I presented to council uh, about diamond maps, uh, this GIS design uh, system for our water systems to keep track of the infrastructure in the city. Um, also would be a, a great tool for our code enforcement along with our fire department with our hydrants and other things. Um, council had asked me to come back uh, with where this would be paid out of, how it was going to be paid. Um, just to recap the cost to the city for unlimited users is $900 a year. Uh, that's $900 a year, which we broke down between the fire department, code enforcement, water and sewer departments. Um, it'll be taken out of the contracted services line item. Uh, and when broke down between the departments, it could out to be a cost rate around $128 a year. Uh, this would be a great, like I said, a great benefit uh, to the city, being able to track our infrastructure. Uh, as I had stated, uh, it's, it's currently being tracked by um, long-term employees who are just uh, recalling when things have been replaced in the city uh, on notebooks, things like that. So this would be a great tool. Um, so again, that would be broke down. It's $900 a year. It comes out to be roughly $120, $128 a year um, for those departments out of the contracted services line. 
Are you looking to do this this year or uh, include this in our uh, budget negotiation? I would like to get it, get it started now, um, but if we had to wait three months, I mean, we've done it for this long now, it can certainly be put on for into the budget for next year. Is there sufficient funding in all the contract service line items of all the departments to pay for it this year? Um, I would have to, uh, could give you an answer on that. Okay. Tonight. Uh, if you can come back to us at the next meeting with. Sure. Our finance supervisor is actually here. I don't know. Um, Heather? Yeah, I think they, for this year, I think with that amount, that is doable. Um, and with us starting now, I don't know if it would run then, no, you know, if we started in November, it would go November to November again when that actual, I don't think it's a January to January thing, but I could find out for that. Um, it was something that was presented to, at a training seminar I went to. Um, and like Neil said, right now we have absolutely nothing other than old paper maps, notebooks, things like that. Um, it would mark everything. We'd be able to start sure. marking all that. So I think it'd be huge. Um, and the sooner we get started on it, I think the better. Um, it's through PA Royal Water, and they actually will help start setting it up. And things, so. I guess my opinion would be, I understand the need. To, uh, some of this goes all the way back to Buzz Evans 40 years ago that he had in his head. And, uh, but I'd rather see some you know, specific line items that, they're, that it's there and uh, or we look at next year's budget. So just my opinion. Anybody else want to comment? Okay. I got one. Uh, I worked for the city about 13 years, and uh, we relied on a lot of old books <laughs> and uh, memories. <laughs> Some of us were getting tied up in the years that we didn't uh, remember quite good. But uh, I think it'd be a great asset to the department and the city itself to get this stuff together and uh, put it down where people can see it. We, everybody needs to. If you need to look at it, you can go look at it. So, yes. Okay. Uh, if the council has no problem uh, uh, with the manager coming back to us next meeting with specific line items and how we can, how we can pay for it this year, okay. or, or your recommendation to take it in the budget, whatever. Okay. okay. I do have a question. Is that nine hundred dollars? That also includes all the training that anybody would need to use it. To That's correct. Right. Okay. Right. So it's it's not a uh, it's not somewhere that we could line item it now. I mean, we could probably look into. Well, that's my question. Yeah, I mean, it would, to, be, to the, it would be $100 out of contracted services. Yeah, I just want to make sure that all the contracted sure. services have enough money in them, uh, okay. considering what we're facing with our budget. I'm not opposed to sure. the project or, or the item. Yeah. Uh, the next item I have uh, is a code enforcement. Uh, currently, the city ordinance uh, 904.4 is snow removal in commercial zones. Um, in that ordinance, nighttime snow shall be cleared prior to 11 a.m. in the morning, prevailing time. Uh, Skipper Code Enforcement Officer would like council to consider changing that 11 a.m. time to 9 a.m. Uh, Skip is here, uh, here at the meeting tonight to explain his reasoning to council uh, in asking for that change. Skip. Um, um, the, the number one priority we have out there is safety of everybody. Um, snow removal is something that typically happens by business when they first open in the morning. 11 o'clock is almost lunchtime. Uh, there are some groups that rotate through lunch that are leaving for lunch at 11 o'clock because you know, on the, you want to take the early lunch. Uh, we have um, uh, chiropractors downtown, drugstores, uh, eyeglass shops, people that are going to the doctors downtown, a lot of people walk downtown. I think it's in their best interest, in the interest of safety of everybody, to move it up till 9 o'clock. 
Um, so I just think that uh, any business that opens at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, there's no reason why uh, they can't have the snow done by 9 in the morning. And you see most of the contractors that are downtown, they're downtown at 4 or 5 in the morning, uh, getting early started. I when I worked for myself, I was downtown. Uh, I was over at Dewey's at 4 o'clock every morning. So <laughs> okay. I, uh, that's pretty much it. Any questions for Skip? Thank you. Uh, why don't we act upon this right now? Um, Council's pleasure. We want to have the city solicitor draw up the changes and have the ordinance prepared for us for next meeting. Absolutely. First reading. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, All right Neil. Council's all in agreement to have that drawn up for next meeting. Very good. Thank you, Skip. Thank you. Uh, the next item we have on the manager's report is just a Diamond Street update with some of the projects we had started over there. Uh, last Friday, the contractor started on the western wall that was left at that site. Uh, basically got all the debris, um, all the plaster that was off the wall, got that all cleaned up. Uh, the next step is for it to be sandblasted. Um, we're still waiting on that. Uh, the contractor has moved on to the front wall where the archways are. Uh, they started that yesterday. They got all the glass down in the front on the Diamond Street side. Um, they're going to be working the rest of the week to get that down. Uh, they were hoping by Thursday to have that front wall completely down, just so everybody in the public understands um, it's being taken down and the archways are going to be restored and then eventually put back up. Uh, we need to put a better base down for the archways to be attached um, uh, back in that uh, location. So we hope to have that down this week. Um, so that's where we're at with the projects, two of the projects out of the three uh, at the demo site. The next item I have is Sunset Heights Park. At the previous council meeting, council was addressed by Jamie Bush in regards to Sunset Heights Park. Uh, Jamie spoke about the condition of the park and how residents would like to see some improvements at the, in that area. I had the opportunity to sit down with Jamie. And we have decided to have a community day uh, slash meet and greet. Uh, that'll be this Saturday from noon to three up at Sunset Heights Park. Uh, that'll be an opportunity for the residents to meet the city officials. Uh, we're gonna have a police car, a fire truck, and a public works vehicle out there as well. Uh, we're also going to have a grill up there and uh, cook some hot dogs and, and uh, have some water as well. Uh, it'll be their chance to, to meet us and also to uh, express their concerns to us on what they'd like to see in that area in that park. Um, so that's Sunset Heights. Uh, the next item I have is the ITDRC, which is the Informational Technology Disaster Resource, uh, Resource Center. Uh, this is through Project Connect. This provides free hardware and installation for internet uh, support during uh, uh, different crises. In response to the COVID-19, their initiative is to provide free homework hotspots uh, to connect students and families uh, living in rural and un underserved communities. Uh, they also welcome community hotspots and they evaluate each uh, for needs, sustainability, and community impact. Uh, the city applied for the service and Wi-Fi has been set up at Burgess Park. Initially, we were looking to have the Wi-Fi service at the Admire Complex. Unfortunately, we don't have any kind of internet service down there for them to be able to hook the Wi-Fi. Um, I have been uh, speaking with Councilman Lukoski and looking at different options for the Edmire Complex as far as internet service goes. I think most of us know down there there's no phone service. Uh, you know, it, it's very hard to text, uh, do anything down there. Um, I do want to thank uh, Sarah uh, Jones and Jess Hilburn for letting me know about this opportunity. Uh, like I said, we did get the hotspot hooked up at Burgess Park. Um, it is set up so if you're uh, as far as how far out the Wi-Fi goes I haven't tested it out but at least it covers the main it's set up at the uh, splash pad building so I think it covers most of the park there so at least it gives folks an opportunity to, to get on the Wi-Fi there's no password or anything like that you can just go to the Wi-Fi and it'll hook on so uh, the last item I have is the CDBG project updates um, most recently we went with Zach Miller the planning director uh, and we spoke about the Edmar Complex, some of the projects that we want to do here in the upcoming year uh, using 2019 CDBG and also 2020. Um, we have allocated somewhere to the uh, amount of, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, maybe $300,000 somewhere in that for the next few years for CDBG money to be used at the Edmar Complex to improve it. Uh, some of those projects we're looking at is putting lights at the high school baseball field, um, lights at the high school uh, girls softball field, and also a dog park um, in the 
which would be field seven. This is in the far corner across from the Drake Well, or the Drake, Drake Well BMX track. Um, we have been working with CJ Gervan, who has provided us uh, lots of information on uh, dog parks and some of the equipment that we would need uh, and getting price quotes. Um, so the projects in the initial phase, the first phase, is, as if you want to call it, would be the lights, the ball fields, and the dog park uh, at the Admire Complex. And that's all I have in the manager's report. Okay. Any questions to the manager? Do I hear a motion to accept this report and place it on file? So made. Second. I'll second. Call roll, please. Mr. Witowski? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Payton? Yes. Mr. McCrillis? Yes. Mr. Crouch? Yes. Uh, minutes of boards and authorities, the Benz Memorial Library of 915. We hear a motion to accept and place on file. I'll make that motion. We hear a second. Second it. Roll roll, please. Mr. Payton? Yes. Mr. McCrillis? Yes. Mr. Crouch? Yes. Mr. Witowski? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Uh, council committee updates. Uh, Nothing, Sarah? No. Okay. Um, briefly on Friday, civil service got together to go over a couple things. Um, I guess uh, back in back February, um, it was before my time on council, council had approved some changes um, to testing guidelines and what the acceptance rates were. Um, it was brought to our attention by uh, our solicitor that it was actually civil service who had to approve those changes and then council would approve after civil service. So those changes, I guess, that were approved by council in February aren't really in effect as of right now because civil service did not approve them yet. There were a couple questions um, that have gone back to uh, both of the chiefs. Neil can give a little bit further update because I guess some of that has happened already from Chief Lamey. Um, but it looks like here in the next couple of weeks we will be reapproaching that, rediscussing it at our meeting to up update the civil service testing. Yeah, uh, as far as the police department goes, there wasn't really any questions as far as uh, what they were asking for. It was more for the fire department. Uh, they had some questions about the uh, uh, starting age of 18 instead of 21. Uh, Chief Laney met with them today. Uh, they were able to, to get information from Joe. He was able to explain some things. Um, everybody's on the same page now. And as Councilman Witoski said, we'll be coming in front of Council here shortly with those, uh, their approval. Okay. I think we'll have that next week. Um, next council meeting. I don't see why not. Okay. Thanks, Jay. Yep. Anything from the airport? Uh, yeah, just the airport update is that uh, I don't know if we ever got a chance to put it on our Facebook, but we have a group of power parachutes uh, people, probably be up to almost 50 of them, that'll be out there Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's open to the public. Um, Saturday evening, there'll be a little concert out there our band, I guess you'd call it, uh, from six to nine. But um, I was told this evening, right before I came here, I was out there, they are gonna have some kind of a little food truck out there. And uh, they'll just have an area cordoned off if anybody brings children, so that they don't get too close to the props on the equipment. But um, it's a good thing for the people to support. Look forward to seeing people out there. And then starting next Monday, the runway's gonna be shut down for 20 some days for, for free heaven. Runway. Bill, no. you want to you want to update on our meeting today? Oh, okay, I can do that. Okay. And we had a meeting this afternoon about four o'clock with the uh, considering the uh, baseball fields down in uh, the Meyer Complex. We met with the boosters and what the coaches, a couple of the coaches. Uh, we got some ideas. We threw it up to them. They threw some ideas back to us. Uh, right now, they're, con they're concerned about the infield and the outfield. Uh, I think uh, that's going to be taken care of through the school, I do believe. Uh, we're concerned on dugouts for the both home and away. 
and I think we're going to uh, we're going to get with with them and uh, see what's available to us and to them, and uh, try to improve what we can improve on down there with, the, with what we have. It's in a three phase, as the mayor said. We work on three three phases. This this is going to be phase number one. So uh, I don't think anything else, Danny. No, I think that. Yeah. All right, at this time we invite the public uh, to take part in our meeting uh, pertaining to anything on, on under old business. Uh, and the only thing under old business is the 2019, uh, 2019 audit. Uh, we, we allow for five minutes for individual speaker. If anybody would like to speak on the 2019 audit, uh, come forward, state your name, and give your address. Give you five minutes. I'm not sure if it pertains to the uh, audit. But anyway, my name is Larry Weldon, and I'm not a citizen of uh, Titusville. And I actually lied about that two days ago. I was in uh, North Carolina at Mike's Farm, and I had a Titusville t shirt on. I said, The airport. The guy came up and said, You're from Titusville. I said, You bet I am. And he said he was too. It, we were actually both from Cherry Tree Township. so. I want to make sure that I'm sorry I lied, but I, I do feel like I'm a member of the community. We won't hold that against you. I know. And <laughs> I, told, business here. I told them that, uh, you know, under the new council rules, that anybody that wants to go to a meeting is treated like an honorary citizen of Titusville to have a question or a concern and not to be authorized because maybe they're just a person with a grudge, which I'm glad to say that uh, I've been identified as that person. I've been identified as being vindictive, and I don't object to any of those categories. So I just want to make that clear. As far as the audit goes, I have no problem with the audit. In fact, I've read the audit. A little history, I've been a CPA, I was a CPA from 1967 to about 1995. And uh, previous experience, I was the chief financial officer of American Sterilizer. A $500 million fortune company in Erie, Pennsylvania. And as part of that, I was responsible for the $500 million budget. So I'm familiar with budgets and I'm familiar with financial analysis. So it's not just like some little hobby I've had, it's been my way I've made my life. Uh, in recent years, last three years, I was 73 years old three years ago. And I accepted being irrelevant and having no purpose. And then the city uh, uh, city mayor, the city manager, deputy mayor called me into a meeting about the airport. And since that, my life has been a little bit of an upheaval trying to figure out why that meeting took place. Uh, I understand Mayor Payton. I don't know if the rules change for participation since I was here the last time, it's been several months. Uh, regarding what, Larry? Like, uh, do I just make statements or can I ask questions? Uh, you can make your statement. I can't ask questions. You can ask questions, but you may not get a direct answer at this evening. I got it. Okay, okay. so it, as far as presentation, making a statement, can, I'm going to make a statement, and obviously, because I'm not going to get answers, I'll give the answer. Because obviously, I wouldn't come to a meeting and ask a question. And and just I'm remember in your question and answer in yourself, you have five minutes. Okay, so the first test question I have is, is everybody in this room willing and purposely or planning to just things water, it's over the water, water over the dam with the airplane transfers in the past? And is there any concern or is it just we're going to move on or we're going to forgive and forget? Is that the consensus of this group about the airplane transfers? So we get no answer, right? No. Right. Okay. So that's obviously true. I'm all for that too. But one of the problems I have is I don't think the citizens know what they're moving away from. You want us to you want the citizens to move forward, you want them to forgive and forget, but so far nobody knows what it is that we're forgiving and forgetting. So I was pretty, pretty disappointed with the auditors not finding anything wrong with the 2019 transfers. And since I've got a 
I'll get right to the documents. Uh, I did a right to know request in December of 2019, and I had done that request also in 2000 and or in March of that year. And the finance manager at that time, not these two beautiful, one not beautiful, just nice young ladies, they weren't there. But I got request back that uh, I don't want to be there. And so, got back, got an answer back that. Uh, no report existed. Well, then I found an email from the former financial manager to me stating that they did exist. And she had definitely named them. So she, I gave her the name, and then they sent me an answer to that request. These guys are right here. So this is, and I don't know if any of you can open it. Get a little nervous here. Yes, yeah, so kind of like going to Walmart. Sorry, Mom, I'm at Walmart today. They buy crayons for everybody in school. <laughs> that sounds like her. It doesn't surprise me. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Larry. Nope, don't have one for you, and it wasn't okay. on purpose. Okay. Okay, so on the left hand side of that is a report that I got back from the former finance manager. And it's the actual hours that were worked in the year 2018. So in the city budget for 2018, the former manager, and before I move on, I want to apologize to Neil. I sent him an email yesterday saying I was going to ask him a question, which I didn't think he could answer. And the point of sending that email was that nobody can answer it point is that nobody in this room, including the auditors who are not here, can give anybody insurance that the interfund transfers are legal, accurate and fair, represent work actually done, and are in compliance with the law. Nobody can answer that question. However, last year, all the people in that sitting in this room stood up and personally said that the 2018 transfers were legal, accurate and fair represented work actually done and were in compliance with the laws of the municipality. And you guys are not, did not take an oath to the citizens of Tyson when you took an oath to obey the laws of the Commonwealth. So I think that's part of your responsibility to know that those interfund transfers meet those requirements that I just mentioned. So if you look in that schedule I gave you, that's the work of Lisa Pearson she gives that report to the previous city manager every payroll period, every month, every quarter, every year. I have the reports for 2018, 17, 16. Also through the right to request process, I got work papers from the years 2010, 11, 12, and 13. In those three years, the city manager added $760,000 bailout money just identified in the work papers Bail out general fund, seven hundred sixty thousand dollars. In the year two thousand and eighteen, he budgeted fourteen thousand five hundred eighty hours, and the, the people in those departments only worked nine thousand eight hundred hours. So he overbilled purposely two hundred thirty thousand dollars. So that's something that I don't think should just be water over the dam. Part of, the, part of the issues here is that everybody thinks nobody, this doesn't make any difference. Here's a schedule. It's kind of an MBA financial schedule. But it's unusually it's shorter than my normal schedule. So, when I look at the $750,000 in those first three years, the two forty dollars in the year 18, 170 in 17, 130 in 15, 16, I get a million two seventy that was transferred for services that wasn't done. That leaves three years that I don't know the answer to being 14 and 15 and 19. 
The reason there is no answer for 19 was the former city manager had the timekeeper, Lisa Peterson, stop posting the time in March of 2019 because I had sent a request asking for those records. And he told her that he didn't want anybody to know those records existed. The schedule I handed out here to here is what happens when you substitute $3 million of profits from the rep from those three funds, you substitute those over instead of adding taxes. The tax numbers that are in here are actually from the tax rolls that I got from the county, and they've been adjusted to represent the values. So if you substitute $3 million from taxes, everybody that's a taxpayer saves their share of three million bucks. But when you take the money from the water fund, sewer fund, half of that money, remember $83 million is, is exempt property, only 68 is taxable. The customers of the water and sewer fund, 50% of them don't pay taxes in Tyson. So when you take three million dollars from them, that water fund, you're taking a million five from the exempt properties, the city, the hospital, the school, the churches, the University of Pittsburgh, renters who don't own property, the people up in Pleasantville and in Oak Creek Valley are paying the cost of the fire and police and sweep the streets. Okay. So nobody hurt, gets hurt. Okay, so the, the exempt properties pay a million five that they shouldn't pay. Top 25% of the property people, after reduced, because they pay, they save taxes a million nine forty one, but they pay in services because everybody pays kind of the same rate. They save a million five sixty six. In the middle, two fifty percent, the two quadrilles, it's almost a break even. The properties on the lower 25% pay hundred eighty seven thousand dollars more cost of living to live here. That's a sham. And if you guys don't want to do anything about it, that's, I think that's going to be your call. So that'll be your legacy. So uh, I know you don't take questions, you don't want to have dialogue and discussions. And to me, it's like, I feel like I'm back here when I was three years ago when Smith was running this outfit. So I, I just kind of, been, I'm kind of, it's kind of embarrassing. Do you know why the, uh, you know how often the interfund transfers are mentioned in the audit? Does anybody know? They're not mentioned. You know why they're not mentioned? They're not in there. Next question, why aren't they in there? Related party transactions. The auditor cannot put in his audit financial statements any transaction between related parties. When a city manager makes a contract with the water and sewer and refuse department, and then goes over and sits at their position, he controls both units. He's a related party. He's a control manager. So he says, this is what I'm going to bill you. And then he goes over and says, this is what I accept. That's not allowed to be in the financial statements. The previous administration claims that $891,000 in the year 2018 was for services rendered. That $891,000 is not in the operating statements of the audit and financial statements. It's been eliminated by the auditors. They do not, it's not part of their audit. They don't care what it is. They're not responsible for it. The only people responsible for the interfund transfers are sitting in this room. The previous ones who handled them, they're gone. And if you wanted to take water over the dam, I, I'm saying I'm leave it up to you guys. No dialogue. So this is no. Okay. Well, I will. I will make a comment. You and I have been friends for a long time, and we're still friends. And I take except. I take exception to you addressing the people at this table and comparing them to the last administration. Oh, and, and why, how, why, are, why are we having a dialogue? Hold, hold, hold on a second. Right. Hold on a second. I, I take exception to that. Because these individuals sitting at this table 
have addressed this issue and they have changed the processes to make this legal and legitimate. We I, have. I, did I ever say they have been? Swear, I have no, been. but for you to compare us to what has happened in the last 12 years that we have no control of. You're not. Go we back have back. no control of it. Okay. I know I'm over five minutes, but I think I have the floor. I know well, I had the floor, and I relinquish it to you. Okay, so. And everything that I said, I never said anybody in this room was responsible for the problem. I didn't here. say that. Okay. So I said, know. I said I take an exception to you comparing us to the last administration because there's no dialogue going back and forth. We don't have time to rehash the last 12 years uh, tonight. So who do you represent? Do you just represent the taxable? The people that have problems. We that represent problem. everybody. Do you, re do you represent the exempt people? We represent everybody in the community, you whether know. they pay taxes, don't pay taxes, pay you a water know. bill, or don't pay a water. And you don't care that they paid a million five that they shouldn't. And you know the answer to that question before you ask it, Larry. You know for a fact that I deeply care about that. Well, and I know that. these individuals deeply care about that, but I can't go back to 2012 and say, we're going to make it go away. No, but we're so, making it go away today. But nobody, who knows you're doing that? The budget process has just started, and it will be made known during the budget process. So do you understand what the benefit was to the previous administration and the previous elected officials? Yes. Yes, I do. And, and, and we're facing a budget today because of what they did. We're facing a budget crisis today that we have to uh, fix over a period of time. We are not going to be able to fix it overnight. But Heather Plowman and Lisa Pearson have done an excellent job tracking hours work. We know if you walked into Heather's office tomorrow, she could tell you how many hours and what the cost was for water, sewer, and refuse to date. We right. know that number. We know that. And don't we also know that we've known that every year? I wasn't around every year. No, they were around every year. No. Heather Plowman was not around every year. Okay. Lisa Neil Freitas is not Lisa Pearson is the person that, that does those reports. You can only. What was that question? You can only. All the directions are what you're taking. What? If the previous council give them directions, yeah. that they have to follow those directions. If the council said no, we're not going to give you this information. That information was not given out. So we, we as a council here will not tell you no. We're going to give you an answer somewhere down the line. I'll guarantee that. I, maybe I missed something, but I didn't. I guess I didn't. I, I missed any kind of reference to the previous council with us. I thought you were trying to say that that you you feel like you're not getting the same answers. I feel like that there's no there's no dialogue. There's like what, I don't know why this just goes on on kind of exposed. Is there's there's the people who benefited are not going to sue. The people that saved all the money are not going to sue. The only people that could come after you are the exempt properties. Okay, and what people in Titus go. And when you get done, it's not it's not going to be. But it's like to me the deceit is. I don't care whether it's legal or not. I got newspaper articles here. Look, here's, here's an article from October 14th. Danny, we are way past five minutes. All right. Oh, All right. Well, there's, a, there's another opportunity for you to speak at the end of the meeting. Uh, but the solicitor has indicated we're way past the five minutes, so we have to. But can't we allow him to have more right now so it's done no, over? Well, if you're going to allow him to have more, anybody that speaks has to be given the same amount of time that any meeting may come to. You yeah, follow yeah. the policy. Yeah, I thought it was five minutes or, or accepted by council to extend. We, le we let people let special events talk for 15 minutes sometimes. I, I, may, I, I make a claim since we've all worked so long in this in the, in the campaign that we let. Let them finish and, and then we're done. You don't. You Mr. Weldon has the, Mr. Weldon has the floor. You can just change the council agenda. is council 
Um, do you want to extend more time to Mr. Walton? I, I would. I would give it to him. Bill. I would assume just have him come back at the end of the meeting. Okay. Um, yeah. I think we've spent a little bit too a little bit of time on this now, Larry. Uh, but let, let us get. I need to put some of this in my mind what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see you come so, back after. Right. I I agree that it should come back in the next public comment time. Okay. okay. No problem. I, I figure you, you might as well do it all at one time. That's how I look at it. But the solicitor's point is if we do that, then at every meeting, we have to allow I, it. I, when we made this ordinance before the solicitor was here, it was five minutes unless we, unless we extend it. I'm not growing very fond of this gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling them what the policy is and they have to follow it or not. Yes, me, Bill. You know, one of the things is we make sure that they don't take the bait. You know, that'd be a terrible thing. To Larry, do. how much more time do you need? Probably a couple minutes. All right. All right. Go for it. All right. So my disappointment was with, so here we have the auditors last year. It's, the auditors do not specifically say you cannot get the auditors that are here to say that they audited the interfund transfers. They will not say that. An auditor cannot quote anything other than what's in his audit reports. When he makes a verbal summary of what's in the audit report, he best be almost quoting the audit report. When a lady last year said, we, we are in pretty good shape, who in the it's we. Why is she a we? She said we, instead of the city is in good shape, she said we are in good shape. She also said, uh, many, uh, we, we have no problem with the interfund transfers. Many people, many, many municipalities use them, although Titusville does it differently. Titusville does it differently because they estimate public works to people, even though they have time cards. The reason they have S used why he had to add, add the public works people is there wasn't enough money in City Hall. If he took 100% of City Hall, he'd get $380,000. When you need 600, you can't you can't allocate $600,000 of $300,000 worth of salaries. So you bring this list of 12 other people onto the list. You get the number you want. If you see the allocation schedule get the number that you want, you put it in down here, and then you adjust all these percentages. This, this sheet is not any more valuable than a napkin. There's nothing of any substance behind this sheet. It looks pretty, it's got, look at the color, look at the color of the bottles. So, I know you won't answer questions, but you guys know who pays your salary? Good point. I don't know if I have one of these for everybody. 75% of your salary, Sarah, is paid by the sewer, the water, and the refuse department. They're not paying us a lot, Larry. No, I know, but they're, they're paying 75% of it. That's about 75 bucks a month. I'm just saying. Not that. And how much are, how much of City Hall is that water, sewer, and refuse paying? 70%. Seven out of every ten hours, everybody in City Hall is not working for the city. Sixty percent of the public works people supposedly are, are working in the water and sewer. Even though a direct laborer, you know where he works. It isn't like you have to allocate. You don't allocate direct laborers. You fill out a time card. I did this project. I did this project. Lisa Pearson, for a number of years, has added up that very accurately. She's not doing any different this year. And she's done since she's been doing it. Okay, it's the same system. In one of his newspaper clippings, he says we have to hire a full-time person if we want to keep track of this work. They've always had it; didn't have to hire a full-time person. Here's what Stephen Falk said on February 2nd: the transfers are included in the scope of our audit, and we noted no issues with that. He also or an email to the Titusville Herald guy and said that he approved, that his firm approved the audit. Well, oh, here's a good one. June 26, 2019. Whatever the guy's name was, city manager, said that transfers were higher than recent years, but claimed that was due to the city doing more projects. 
they never know what the priority projects were. That's just funny. The transfers, according to the city manager, are made to pay for work for city employees due to benefit the individual funds, such as fixing the sewer problem. He also said another time that they reimburse. It's never been a reimbursement, it's been a prepayment. You're not even allowed to prepay funds out of the water and sewer department to the city. They can only be paid after the services are performed. So I guess my whole point is, uh, if you represent everybody in exempt taxable people, the, the hospital, the school, the renters, 52% of the people in the city are renters. They, they paid a million and a half that they weren't supposed to pay over the last 10 years. I think that's outrageous. And I wasn't making any reference to this. I'm saying not having a dialogue is, you know, I, I like everybody else thought the authors are going to come up and just go crazy when they found out that the city manager had told an accounting clerk to quit keeping track of the labor. I don't know what these auditors looked at. I don't know that they looked back to 2018 and saw the deception that was going on in 2018. Okay, the interfund transfers are not a concern of the auditors. They're not his concern. They're your concern. It doesn't matter whether it's legal. It was deceitful. Most people are like smiling and laughing at you guys. Now, I, I like dialogue. I'm a fan of dialogue. So, um, is it all right if I ask you some questions? Sure. Okay. Um, would you agree that how everything is set up that interfund transfers are a necessity? No. I, I mean, they, they could be. They're not. You you can identify those people that. Well, you get, here's, no, no, what, let, me, let me explain okay. why I have to say that. In the issue with the city of Titusville, the city of Titusville is the only municipality that I'm aware of in Pennsylvania that does two allocations. They allocate City Hall, which is $390,000, and they allocate 70% of it over there. An allocation is proper. Most states, and I think Pennsylvania would have one, and a city solicitor could get a hold of somebody in the office. There are approved methods and practices. For example, the building inspector, 75% of his work being done in those three departments is just, it's funny. He doesn't, he doesn't even, you know, it's, it's, it's funnier than you guys being drilled out of that office. The human resource person gets allocated based on the number of employees that she works. These people get Get, would get billed based on where they provide their services. And instead of somebody sitting with a crystal ball and saying she works 25, 25, 25, 25, ask her where does she do her work. Ask the, ask the treasurer. So that's the, that's the city hall part. The, the direct laborers, they're, they're, they're never allocated. Any, any other city does not do an estimate. They, keep track of the time, just like you, they do it exactly like you guys are doing it now. But for the last eight years, it's been this crystal ball thing. Where, where I'm getting at with that question is um, to, to be able to pay people properly, you know, if we do indeed track those hours, an interfund transfer is necessary if employee A works sure. 30 hours in water and sewer and 10 hours on the street, uh, those 30 hours should come out of water oh, and yeah. sewer and oh, transferred yeah. into the general fund I'm to pay I'm saying out of the 6.4 million transferred, 3 million was bogus. So to me, it sounds like the issue was in the past that the, the numbers were, it's not the actual transfer, it's the fact that they were grossly overestimated before things happened. Is it, am I following this correctly? That that's really where the issue lies. That it's exactly the same thing. Here's what I'll, here's how I would make a comparison. If a city manager went in and altered a time, let's say a guy worked 40 hours, and on that time card he said I worked 
30 for the city and 10 in the sewer. If a city manager went and altered that to make it uh, 20 hours from the city and 20 for the sewer, that would be deceitful, that would be fraud because there would be a trail. When a city manager has the actual time cards of somebody, he compares it to his estimate, and he sees that the estimate is wrong. By not doing it, he's having the same effect as that purposeful fraud. Yet, he knows what the actual hours are, and he chooses not to make a reconciliation. The city manager is in charge of the people that handle finance. He is the finance guru. Not the guru. He's responsible for them, and he has to trust them. In, in but as part of that, a reconciliation has to be made. It says in the, in the not, I don't know in the law, but in the case studies and the conversations in the CPA bulletins, that you're required to, if you do an estimate, you're required to compare it to the action. You just don't do an estimate in December and say, these guys are going to work 14,000 hours, write me a check on January 1st for half, and then the other half on June 1st. No any other city does that. Now, what I have to say is I, I do know for a fact that all of the practices have been put in place to act, to accurately track the amount of hours worked. Well, I'm, and, I'm just confirming they've always, had, and, they've always been at Well, and I, I understand that, and I know that going forward with this council, what, what what it's being looked at as is knowing those hours instead of yes, I do. yeah even though it's still essentially all budgets are an estimate in a sense um, the by tracking the hours we will be able to produce a budget that's as close to functional as possible without having to grossly estimate no, you're not what, what estimate. is coming in you're not going to and, all. and in, so for me sitting here i i there's absolutely nothing that i can do about what has happened in the past um and i can i can look at the past and i can learn an example i can learn a lesson from that past but i can't if I continuously focus on it, my work going forward on sure, this council right. isn't going to be as effective. Right. So, it, you know, to say that, um, which you did make the comment, that if we just accept it and then water over the dam, um, that's our legacy, is what you said. And I disagree with that. I, dis I, I believe that our legacy will be that we did recognize that things happened. We put practices in place to alter that. And our legacy will be determined four or five years down the road when we can then see that the budget is functioning properly. I was a poor choice of words. I'm not Mark Twain. I like Mark yeah. Twain, but I'm obviously not Mark Twain. Uh, that didn't mean your legacy. I just, I think I just meant it's your responsibility whether you expose the previous practices or not. And I don't see any harm in exposing them. Uh, I don't know. I don't, see, I don't see what I don't see what the issue is. I think it will this be. This guy would think. This guy would probably tell you it could be inflammatory. But it's not for me because we have evidence. I mean, I have all this evidence that I got to the right to know. You know where most of the information came from? The city council minutes in the audit report. You know, when you look at the audit report and you take the last 10 years and you look at the winter fund transfers and what they were in 2010 and you look at what the tax revenues were, and you use that as a base year, the incremental increase in 10 years has been $6 million. $5 million came out of the increase in the interfund fund transfers. That's the only way the city survived. And more than a million came out of the, out of the taxes. So how do you stop, you know, you guys, are, you guys are elected officials. Where is your practice and procedures to make sure that inner fund transfers don't get out of hand again? You guys were elected for four years. 
heck, as soon as the taxpayers find out you're going to have to raise the taxes, you're, you're going to bring these old people back. Be quiet so they don't have to raise the taxes. I, uh, my dialogue would just be that I think, I think some of this will be automatically exposed when, when we bring forth a new budget and show how we're doing it by actual allocation by actual hours. Isn't that fair enough? Yeah, I think we as a council, I think we deserve a chance to get this on the upper upper level. Well, I don't, I don't think there's any question. You know, like every place that goes downtown, this guy is like, like the Messiah, and I think deservedly so. These two because he's been crucified a lot. Everybody's talking about these two people. The bullies are gone. It's fun to be in City Hall. The treasurer likes being in there. The controller likes being in there. In fact, they're, they're not treated like uh, uh, employees. They're treated like elected officials. Well, well, moving forward, Larry, I just want you to know that when the audit report came in, there were probably three or four pages of recommendations uh, from, you know, needing someone in, in City Hall in the Treasurer's office to a full page of IT problems which Jay and Neil are working on. We've taken those recommendations serious and Heather is tracking those numbers. At the beginning of the year, we transferred $500,000 to the general fund as a loan. Okay? And we, and we are charging ourselves, what, 1.3? 1 1.2, 1 1.3% interest, which if that money is not used specifically by justifying hours worth, we're on the hook to pay that back at the end of the year. And we're prepared to do that. So moving forward, okay, but like I, Jay says, we no, have put... I don't, there's, I don't think there's a person in this town that doesn't feel so much more comfortable with the leadership that it has right now. And I am not quite... I'm personally as excited as anybody else I talked to. So but here we have 2019 is not closed. The city hall, the city has, even though they didn't compile them, they have the time cards. If they compile them, the odds are that since 2018 had a $240,000 shortfall or an overage just in public works, and you guys are demonstrating right now that it's going to be if it was two hundred thousand dollars after six months, probably at the end of the year, they're gonna they would have charged overcharged four hundred thousand. Pretty close. So it seems that if you took it seems like two hundred and nineteen, if you extrapolate that, it's pretty obviously that they overcharged two hundred, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars if you just say they continue on if if, if they're estimating it's the same as it was in the prior. Okay. So well, what, what what should you do about that? Well, probably, Larry, that's a discussion for a later day during our budget sessions on, on how we're going to handle that. Uh, to answer that question off the top of our head tonight, probably can't do it, and that's not avoiding the question. Well, you do know that you guys are part of the Commonwealth, and you do know that general, the uh, Auditor General has a whole bunch of staff that likes to do this kind of work. And if you guys would contact them and ask them to send somebody down to give you some help. I bet they would. Because I don't think I don't think in this kind of a case, I, I think I think you're passing kind of passing the buck. Okay. Well can we we agree to leave it there for tonight? And we welcome you back any any sure. other night. But you know I mean it, it's, it, it's, the million and a half is, is not a fair deal to those exempt property players. They're, they're your responsibility as much as the people that save the million. I, I don't think I'm arguing that point with you at all. Yeah. Okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. I hate to bring the next subject up. <laughs> Do I hear a motion to accept and place on file the 2019 audit? I'll make that motion. I hear a second. I'll say. Any further discussion? Yeah, I mean, what what 
differences that make whether we do or we don't. Yeah. We're just accepting it. We're not saying we totally agree with everything. Thanks for your help. Right. Right. Any further, Jay? No. Good. All roll, please. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Payton? Yes. Mr. McCrillis? Yes. Mr. Crouch? No. Mr. Wachowski? No. At this time, we allow for public participation for items under new business. New business. Which is a special event moving the park, Halloween, CDBG resolution, our application, and CARES Act agreement and authorization. Well, the special event application moving in the park. State your name. And I'm Sarah Miller, Executive Director for Tyson Council of the Arts. Uh, we are hoping to partner with the YWCA. They're having Fall Fest on that Friday, the 23rd of October. And after the Fall Fest, we'd like people to head down to Admire Complex to watch a Halloween themed movie. We're hoping to play Hocus Pocus. It would start at about 7 and be over at 8.30. But our final movie that we had in the park in September was canceled because nobody showed due to the cold. And so we were hoping to get permission to either have like patio heaters, propane burn or contain fires in like 50 gallon drum. Um, so we could encourage people to come and have a way to stay warm in addition to the movie in the park, which would be opera ages like we have throughout the summer. Questions? No. I think it's a great idea. Okay. Is that question? Is it in the same area where you had the movies? Is this a different area in Meyer or the same? No, it would be the same area. Same location. Mm -hmm. And if I were to have the contained fires, I would leave them probably on that driveway so we're not ruining any grass. And the ashes would be contained in the barrel so there wouldn't be anything on the ground. You know, do you have the insurance? Do I hear a motion to approve or not approve the special event application uh, for the Council of the Arts? So moved. Move. I hear a second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Crouch? Yes. Mr. Watoski? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Payne? Yes. Mr. McCrillis? Yes. Thank you. Halloween, trick or treating. Yep. Uh, yeah, Council, there is a resolution from 2004, uh, a resolution of the Council of the City of Titusville to set the day and time for Halloween trick or treat in the City of Titusville. Uh, it appears it's always been the last Thursday of October from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. each year. Um, I guess the question is Halloween this year is on a Saturday. That's a brief discussion about, I know some other municipalities are moving theirs to Saturday because of the lovely leave on the weekend. Um, so I guess that's the discussion for council to decide whether to leave it on. Well, I guess first off, if you're having trick or treat, secondly, are you wanting to keep it on Thursday or move it to Saturday? There's no movie on Saturday? That's the council of the Arts doesn't have anything on Saturday? No, we moved it to the 20th. Okay, because we had originally heard it was going to be the 30th. That was our original plan, but I'm pulling the I'm still new to the job card. I did not realize the partnership we had with the YW in terms of Fall Fest, and so to not bridge the gap there, I was okay. now putting the movie on the phone. But thank you for considering that. Okay. It's Council's pleasure. I'd make a motion. I'd like to see it stay the same. Is that a motion? Well, I'll make that a motion. Motion to leave it on Thursday. Yes. What's that date, you know? Uh, that would be the 29th. 29th? Oh, yeah. Motion on the floor to leave trick or treating on the 29th. Do I hear a second? We can't discuss before we have a second? No. Okay. I'll second. Uh, the motion's on the floor uh, to hold trick-or-treating on the 29th. Uh, 
discussion. Well, I just wonder, I know there's been a lot of people in the community ask why we don't have it on Halloween itself. And I'd like to hear from the Messiah over here. Um, <laughs> what called? No, seriously, I would like to hear, since I've only been back in town three years, I'd like to hear what it, why do it on Thursday, so Saturday. Why do you think? I think it's always been on Thursday. For ever since that thing incident happened. Right? Ever since the incident down in Old City many years ago. I don't see why, you know, people are used to it. They got a few hours. Yeah. Why change it? I mean, people are used to that Thursday night. Okay. I, I yeah. yeah. I, I was a kid when it happened, um, and they actually. For a couple of years, it was Thursday, or I think they did it Saturday afternoon. It was during the day. Um, and then to move it to night, they made it Thursday night. And I believe that they used to always schedule a, a teacher work day for on the Friday following. So it used to be kind of a long weekend. Um, That's long. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, Kids. I, I am actually I am actually a fan of having it on Halloween, but I also know that there are several people in the community who love Halloween and kind of go overboard. And I've seen a lot of people that they have already taken the day off of work. They take it off in advance. To, Thursday, yeah, that Thursday to prepare everything for trick or treaters and I. You know, I would hate to kind of throw a wrench in their yeah. plans. And, and it's I think, a little late now, right? Yeah, it, the kids have already been, a lot of kids have been denied, denied so much this, this summer. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So why take their Halloween away yeah. <laughs> on, on, you know, on Thursday night? And I, can then, see it, I can really see it on a Saturday. And then but, also by having it Thursday night, if some other communities have changed it to Saturday, uh, uh, maybe it gives the kids some opportunity to get a couple of trick or treats in. So we'll come to our community now. Yeah. We will go. Sir, bring him in. I, mean, I would prefer to see it on Halloween, but you know, I I don't really have a firm opinion either way. So okay. I'm I'm good with whatever. Okay. There's a motion on the floor, a second, uh, to leave Halloween on the trick or treating on the 29th. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. McCrillis? Yes. Mr. Payton? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Watowski? Yes. Mr. Crouch? Yes. Thanks for the explanation, Bill. Resolution number 24, CDBG application. Neil? Yes, this is a resolution of City Titesville authorizing signatures and the submission of the fiscal year 2020 Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, application by Crawford County. Basically, it's just uh, basically just approving, officially approving the fiscal year 2020 CBG application. Do I hear a motion to approve or not approve resolution number 24? I'll make the motion to approve. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Payton? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Watoski? Yes. Mr. Crouch? Yes. Mr. McCrillis? Yes. Resolution 25, the CARES Act Agreement and Authorization. Neil? Yes, this is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Titusville to approve the Coronavirus Relief Fund Governmental Re Recipient Agreement and to authorize the Mayor of Titusville City Council to sign said agreement. Uh, this is uh, the City of Titusville has been awarded funds through the Crawford County Municipal Aid Program in the amount of $9,358.66 in the first cycle of funding reimbursement for COVID-related expenses. Do I hear a motion to approve Resolution 25? I'll make a motion to approve Resolution 25. There a second? I'll second it. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Payne? Yes. Mr. McCrillis? Yes. Mr. Crouch? Yes. Mr. Watowski? Yes. At this time, uh, we offer the floor for public uh, input. Anybody wishing to speak to council? 
Mr. Elliott, state yeah. your name. Uh, James Elliott, 306 North Franklin Street, Titusville. Uh, I had a couple questions uh, concerning Halloween. Can you tell me when council has uh, uh, voted on the uh, resolution in the past? Has it always been around this time? Or has it like been in September or August or anything like that? Have you looked back through the previous year minutes? I have not. I've only uh, found resolution 12 of 2004 uh, putting it on that Thursday. I could not tell you. Okay. Because if you do it next year, in order to make it convenient for everyone, you have to decide like in July so people will, uh, won't have to put in their time off. Because if you wait till this week, next year, you'll have the same problem. Thank you. Excellent. So, uh, then I had another question about the, uh, uh, if you could tell me who's restoring the uh, archways at the Dime, Dime Street property and what the cost is going to be associated with that. Uh, as far as restoring would be Bob Joyce. Okay. And I do not have a cost. Okay. So it's an open checkbook for that? Uh, I would say it's an open checkbook. Okay. All right. And then for Larry Weldon, uh, uh, he had the... Uh, uh, talked for a long period uh, during the uh, old business, which it actually it, it doesn't say old business on this where you want to talk, it just says pertaining to agenda items. Uh, but couldn't you have also just given them a special presentation time slot? You have the right to change the agenda at any time, I would think. I guess the solicitor's here, he could tell us. Uh, you have that spot up here where you could just take that correction. Well, we didn't know. Well, we, didn't, we didn't know if Mr. Weldon would have contacted Mr. Freitas, he could have had a, a yeah. so special he presentation. Next time he could ask for a special presentation. It usually doesn't take that long. Right. Okay. All right. And uh, pertaining to his presentation, uh, where he said there could be some fraud on there, is the city interested or are they considering going back and maybe charging the previous manager for fraud? I'm not going to let them talk about that. That's a legal decision that needs to be made, and that would involve litigation. So okay. we can't talk about that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elliott. Sorry. That's all right. Anybody else? Council comments. I just wanted to ask a question about the, the, except the financial statements, but one of the things going forward to Jay's point, when you have legal interfund transfers accurately, let's say the public works people, and the auditors, because whether it's an arm's length transaction or not, the auditors are required by auditing standards to eliminate those charges. When that happens, I'm reading the operating statements, and if I have the audit here, I look at the operating statements for water and sewer. Does anybody have a copy of the audit here? I don't. The, so let's say that in 2020, you guys actually transferred bona fide arm's length transactions in your definition of $400,000 to the water from the water and sewer. In the statements, those expenses will not be shown there. So how do I, as a reader, know what the real income is of those three statements. You guys need to have an internal, so when you go to do the rates, you know, the water rates and the sewer rates, I think are to have something to do with cost justification. I mean, you just go to a crystal ball and say what the water rate is, or is there an engineering company that comes in and helps determine it? Usually an engineering firm calculates that out. Yeah. So, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Nobody, nobody knows in this city what the operating income is for those three departments. It's not in the audit statements because the audit statements eliminate all interfund transfers. Okay. Your budget system treats those interfund things as an expense in the budget. But you guys don't put out any other statements than the audit statements that I'm aware of. Is there, are there any internal financial statements under at the year end? Showing showing what? what, the, the, what the total the, income and totally, totally showing the water and sewer. The the Heather, Heather, correct me if I'm wrong, but the final the final budget 
numbers at the end of December, once those are closed out, would show the exact amount we collected and the exact amount we spent, correct? Yeah, your revenue and your expenses. When you start looking at the, the audit and the financial statements, um, if you look, they break down the general, they break down your enterprise funds and things like that. And they do show on there the transfers. And but they don't show them as an operating expense. Um, I'd have to look at the audit to, to see exactly how, but they are, yes, I believe they are separate. They show your revenues and expenses and um, liabilities. And then at the bottom, it just shows the transfer, it doesn't. So when you're looking at the salaries, expenses of the sewer department, it only has the people that are budgeted in there. If the public works people were two hundred thousand dollars fixing the sewer line, in the other financial statements, those that two hundred thousand dollars is not part of the labor cost on it. Like just water and sewer. When the auditors come in, though, they look at all of that. I mean, when they I know, and when they publish it, I'm just saying if you if you get your audit statements, you look at the salaries. And fringes for the sewer department, it only includes the people that you budgeted to do. The people that actually went over and dug the ditches from public works, the auditors are not allowed to put those. So I'm just saying, how do you know, how does anybody in this room know what their income is for those three funds? We'll try to find out. By the final year end numbers. But where, where are they? They're in the audit report, right? No, I'm not even talking about the audit report. We're looking, when we look at our December year-end budget, we'll know what taxes we collected, what what water we collected, what sewer we collected. Um, you know, you're talking audit, I'm talking our our financial report that we get from Heather. And, right. and in January, okay. in January, I'm we'll probably get... Probably a new point. I'm just saying the public doesn't, the public doesn't see what you see. Uh, they no, but they could. Yeah. They could. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. You're welcome. I think we just need, um, before we end, to have a motion authorizing you to close on Friday on the day property, or you or Neil or whoever. No, you can, you, uh, we're closing on the day property on Friday. I hear a motion to have the proper officials sign it. Make a motion. The proper officials sign it. <laughs> I'll second it. <laughs> Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Crouch? Oh, yes. Mr. Watoski? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Payton? Yes. Mr. McCrillis? Yes, yes. Comments by counsel. Sarah? I don't have any tonight. Okay. Bill? Uh, just one for Larry. Uh, all our budget sessions aren't open to the public, am I right? You're right. Work sessions. So, uh, I, you know, I. I'd appreciate it if you want to come out, sit down, and listen to what's going on and input. Uh, we can use all we can, all we can use. We can, we'd love to have. Thank you. You're welcome. Jay. Um, yeah, I'll try to make this quick. Um, I today I got to have a conversation with Councilman Crouch, and this is something I've seen my entire life here, um, Titusville. I. I, I love this community and I'd say our biggest Achilles heel with everything is uh, we spend a lot of time looking at the past. So I have this quote here from Lyndon Johnson that says, yesterday is not ours to recover, but tomorrow is ours to win or lose. And I, I use an analogy with Councilman Crouch today and I said, I feel like so much in Titusville, we, it, the analogy is we're driving this car down the interstate and while we're driving the car down the interstate all we're doing is looking in our rearview mirror and if we do that uh, there's a couple things that are going on we're missing all of these exits that we're going by that could guide us to so many great unknown places and then the, the final and worst thing is if we're looking in our rear view mirror, it's not a matter of if, but just a matter of when we crash. And um, I can remember when SciTemp closed down and I feel like so many people in Titusville, we have focused in the rear view mirror to that one thing. 
And I will tell you that there is a lot of great stuff that is either happening right now or going to be happening in the near future. And that's just getting the small snowball rolling. And I believe that Titusville is going to be capable of amazing things in the future. But we have to be open to not looking in the rearview mirror and looking at the road in front of us. And um, we can't change those things that have happened. We can learn from them, but we have to go forward. And if we don't do that, we're, we're going to crash. And it's just, it's just a matter of time. And so we'll do our part to keep us going, but it's not just about the five people sitting up here and our city hall employees. It's about everybody in this community looking at the road ahead and us all taking the journey together to make Titusville the best it can be. That's all I have. Thank you. John. Uh, yeah, I got a couple things. I didn't write them down and prepare like Jay, but I would just like to say that uh, the solicitor wasn't here at the beginning of the year and I apologize if it seemed like I, was, I wasn't trying to argue about giving somebody more time. I thought that that was our intent at the beginning. I would just like to say that good things are happening. A little over two years ago, we started this journey to, uh, to fix things, and a group of people that got together said the best way to fix things, if you don't like the way they are, is to get in and get involved and make a difference. And sorry if Larry's going to miss this, but I, as much as there was a little tension here and there, I appreciate Larry coming. I, I, Larry, I appreciate you coming today. I, and, and here's one thing that came out of two years ago when we started discussing all this, because at that time people were like, we need to do this, we need to do that. Well, get involved and change. I, I encourage other people to get involved and change. What's interesting, to a positive about what Larry, the stuff Larry brought up tonight, every person sitting at this table tonight wasn't here two years ago. And we have an opportunity to set new courses and, and to expose things that shouldn't be there to show that people know that we're going to make a difference. And I'm certainly committed as much as uh, my salary has not increased since I started. My hours certainly have. And I, I enjoy working with people up here. Denny and I were part of the two original. And, and, uh, and, but I appreciate you coming and, and talking to us tonight. Thank you. Hope, my whole point was, you guys know what was in the rear view mirror. And now that you know, I'm with you. We're looking forward. I Sounds good. I, wasn't, I didn't know whether you were aware or not. All right, two things for the manager. Um, individuals are starting to go south now. Um, if you could have a recommendation for us on Snowbird, on utility billing, uh, that's been on the back burner for about a month now. And the other is, have, have we had any correspondence uh, with Mr. Dingman? Nothing. Those, track, those tracks are getting worse. Like I said last time, I witnessed somebody fall on them. Mm -hmm. um, if the city solicitor has to send a certified letter, they need they need taken out. Okay. That's all. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Anybody Discussion. opposed? <laughs> all roll, please. Mr. McCrellis? Yes. Mr. Crouch? Yes. Mr. Witowski? Yes. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Mr. Payton? Yes.